On October 6th, 1973, during the Holy Yom Kippur and Ramadan fasts, the combined armies of Egypt, Syria, and a coalition of Arab and Soviet satellite states launched a surprise attack against Israel in the Sinai Peninsula and Golan Heights. Egypt's crossing operation, codenamed Operation Badr, began with an airstrike and intense artillery bombardment of the Barlev Line forts using over 2,000 artillery pieces. Using high-pressure water cannons, Egypt broke through Israel's 18-meter high sand wall. An assault force of 32,000 infantry began crossing at five different locations. Within two hours, 23,000 Egyptian infantry soldiers had seized a one-mile strip of land on the east banks of the Suez Canal. Three years prior, in 1970, both sides agreed on the Rogers Plan, putting an end to the War of Attrition. In violation of the agreement, which stated that all belligerents maintain the military status quo within 50 kilometers of the canal, Egypt erected a deadly surface-to-air missile array with Soviet assistance covering all altitudes of airspace. As Israeli planes responded to the invasion along the canal in 1973, they fell victim to the SAM array. In order to counter Israeli armor, Egyptian infantry teams were equipped with large numbers of portable anti-tank weapons, including a deadly Sagar battalion attached to each crossing division. As Israeli armor rushed to contain the Egyptian crossing, Egyptian infantry teams began destroying IDF tanks with these deadly missiles. Israel was aware of the existence of the rockets, but was unprepared for their wide deployment. Coinciding with the Egyptian attack along the Suez Canal, Syria invaded the Golan Heights beginning with an airstrike against several locations and an intense artillery bombardment of IDF strongholds along the Purple Line. Israel watched in horror as planes they had counted on for a swift victory were downed by Soviet-supplied SAM missiles. Israel had only 170 tanks and 400 soldiers on the front lines when the war broke out. Two hours later, three Syrian armored divisions crossed the anti-tank ditch into Israeli territory, overwhelming the weakly defended Purple Line. Israeli forces found themselves engaged in desperate holding battles against three Syrian mechanized infantry divisions comprising 28,000 troops with strong armored components. The IDF anticipated that a Syrian attack would be concentrated in the north and delegated additional strength there. In reality, Syria launched a multi-divisional attack along the entire border in Golan. Facing overwhelming odds, IDF defenses in southern Golan eventually crumbled, and by nightfall, Syrian units had reached the western edge of the Golan Heights. With no strategic depth, this incursion was serious, putting Syrian units within miles of major Israeli population centers. At the same time, Syria launched an attack on the Mount Hermon outpost a key strategic vantage point known as the eyes and ears of Israel. The idea failed to provide adequate defense of Mount Hermon and it quickly fell into Syrian hands. For Israelis, there was no doubt that this was a battle for their country. For the Arab soldiers, it was about territory and national pride. With a more complex geopolitical situation and introduction of various new technologies that neutralized Israel's key advantages, one thing was clear, this would not be another six-day war.